where are we, Brad? I see a lot of solar inverters on the wall. And I also see some on the ground. And I see some EV chargers as well. What's the name of this facility and what do you use it for? Are you like one of the main testing places for these products in Australia? Well, this is the facility is called Nexus. And yep. it's about understanding how solar inverters and EV chargers and also vehicle to grid technology interacts with the grid, particularly our grid. Yep. Uh, we do this testing on behalf of uh, Essential Energy, but we do help uh, vendors of products develop products to go to market so that we can advance the transition. Please contribute. It really helps my independent, honest journalism. I hear you are one of the organizations that really helped SIG Energy um, get their SIG install battery ready for Australia, which is quite popular at the moment. Yeah, that's right. We helped SIG Energy to develop their vehicle to grid capability. Uh, and we hope to see that in the public arena in the next few months. Cool. Um, yeah, and I'll show you what it looks like outside. Uh, there's a Ford F-150, which Brad has used for testing with vehicle to grid, which means you can get energy into the vehicle and send it back again, two directions, not just charging it like my electric car chargers from my home EV charger. I'm here today with Brad, the manager of innovation at Essential Energy, which is the DNSP, but let's just call it the owner of the grid, poles and wires for the vast part of New South Wales. Which parts of New South Wales? 95% of New South Wales geographically wow. we okay. cover. Yeah, so just excluding basically Sydney, um, bits of the Hunter. Yeah, Wollongong. Wollongong, yeah. yeah, everywhere else. Essential Energy has been really good at testing new types of public electric car chargers. And this is one of them. Which, which one is this one, Brad? Oh, this one's made by uh, City Pass or City EV yep. in the UK. Um, they distributed in Australia. This one's a, a tap and go charger, seven kilowatts. Okay, cool. So yeah, that's one big difference. I haven't seen any in chargers in Australia, pole chargers which allow phone or plastic uh, credit debit card tap and pay yet. That would be really good for people who don't like apps, which is some people. Not everyone wants to have 15 different charging apps. Um, and this is pretty slim as well. Is that's, this one of the slimmest ones? That's correct. So this one here will go into one of our assets into, uh, if those that are familiar, our Streetlight Charger trial site. This is where we're going to put this one. Okay. So expect to see this somewhere in the Port Macquarie CBD sometime soon, and you'll be able to try it out for yourself? Indeed. Okay. In fact, we welcome nice. it. Come and try it out. Cool. Um, will it be free or will it be paid? Uh, this one here, we're working out the commercial details, sure. but it'll be with the CPO. Okay, yeah. it'll be with a charging provider, and I guess it kind of makes sense for it to be paid, but perhaps, we'll see, because otherwise, how would you be able to test if that works? Exactly right, we do have to charge for tap and go. Yeah, yeah. okay. So this is the Ford F-150 Lightning, which has been modified for Australia, and effectively, the OEM is Oz EV. Ford isn't the company that supplies these. They supply the car to Aussie V and Aussie V makes it work in Australia. And most importantly, this car has been tested by Essential Energy and proven to work with bi-directional charging. So that's pretty cool. If you happen to have enough money, you need a fair bit of money to buy one of these and need a car for industrial commercial purposes that supports bi-directional charging. It is an option and it works. Other cars, we'll see if they work. Unfortunately, the car manufacturers are being a bit coy about saying which of their models work. I know that some of them do and some of them don't, but most people aren't willing to say it until the car manufacturers step in and definitely give the 100% tick about what's allowed with their particular each car model. How fast will it work? Will it work at all? We'll just have to see. I know everyone's frustrated, but eventually they'll release the information. Okay, so we're now in Essential Energy's simulated home. Of course, we don't live in a shipping container, but the idea is to have the classic kinds of common things that you use electricity for in a house. So Brad, one thing that I found is people seem to think that the only kind of home battery is your classic Tesla Powerwall or the new modular stack like this. This one from SIG Energy, SIG Store, but 
there are lots of other kinds of batteries and ways to store excess energy, whether you have solar and it's your excess energy or whether it's just off peak grid energy. So what about, can you show us some of those, Brad? Sure. So uh, this is what good to start with. Yeah, this is a, a thermal battery um, doing your hot water for you. So effectively you're storing your energy in yep. the hot water here, in the hot water system and consuming it back at a time that's convenient to you. So millions of Australians would have this already. It's a classic old hot water system that uses a thermal element in the bottom to heat the water. And like Brad said, if you can control it, this kind of old school hot water heater won't have Wi-Fi of its own. How are you controlling it, Brad? We use a device called a Shelly yep. on a switchboard and that's Wi-Fi mm. enabled. And then we apply a Home Assistant layer to the control algorithms. Yeah, so Home Assistant is kind of nerdy software app that a lot of people use who want to get a lot of control over their home and start and stop and change different levels of different appliances like hot water heaters. Um, but will it always be like that? Will it be really nerdy? No, we, we're very confident that the new future with artificial intelligence will make this a lot easier. Okay, so hopefully within three to five years, totally normal people who don't want to use lots of apps or home assistant will be able to control things like a hot water heater and have it store excess cheap electricity or free solar from your roof without having to set up lots of complicated connections between all their appliances and home assistant. So there's other kinds of batteries too, aren't there, Brad? Let's Indeed. have a look at another one. So I didn't think about this till Brad told me, but you can actually use a smart fridge as a battery. How, how does that work? Yes, yeah, so this fridge has got Wi-Fi and some energy enablement capabilities. Yeah. The way that a f normal fridges work in the new world is that they chill the freezer section. Yeah. And there's a little so fan. The freezer sections down the bottom in this, but it could be at the top. It works in the same way that's, regardless. That's right. And there's a fan that's blown cold air into your fridge section. Yeah. So what we do here at our test facility is we drive the freezer temperature right down. Okay. We have excess solar that stores the energy in the freezer. Yep. Your fridge temperature is, is unaffected. Yep. You get very well frozen ice cream. For those that don't like ice cream, it might be an issue. But that is another way of storing your energy and avoiding hmm. your fridge running in times where prices might be high. Okay, that's kind of cool. Could be useful for people who have in the country, you know, it is essential energy. It covers a large part of regional New South Wales. Um, could have big chest freezers and could use those as a battery. Yeah. I see there's a screen back there. What does the screen show? Let's have a look. So this is just one of our dashboard screens here at, at our test facility Nexus. And it's showing uh, what our solar generation is on the roof at the moment, yep. um, which is the far left hand screen. The middle screen is the spot price, national electricity spot price for energy. Yep. Uh, you can see that today is not a great day for solar generation. Usually when there is lots of solar, the price will be negative. Yeah. Um, but you can make a decision around how you consume energy based on that chart. The pie chart's showing the energy consumption within our lab facility by PowerPoint. So we, when we turn assets on and off, that pie chart will, will change. And we've also got a bit of a weather um, widget there showing what the current weather here is in Port Macquarie. The middle chart's showing the energy flows in the lab at the moment. So this yeah. is a home assistant sort of display layer and Brad has his control on the tablet there. So let's turn the lights on, Brad. Sure. Lights on. And that's exactly the same way that you control sending excess electricity to the fridge or start the hot water heater going. What else can you do with it? What else have you got hooked up? Can you start your car, electric car charging from there? Yes, we do charge and discharge cycles for our vehicle to grid through uh, this application. Okay. And we turn our hot water systems on and off. We turn yep. our pool pump, simulate pool pump off, on and off. We can control our dishwashers, our dryers, the washing machine, uh, and the fridge we've talked about before. Okay. Um, for Home Assistant to connect to an EV charger, does it have to have any particular feature like OCP, OCPP or? No, we, we, we haven't used an OCCP implementation here. You yep. can, uh, but no, generally speaking, most of them have a, what they call an API yep. or an integration outcome into Home Assistant. Oh, okay. That's pretty cool. 
Thanks for liking, subscribing and sharing my videos. It really helps me make more videos like this for you. And have a look at the suggested videos up above. I'm pretty sure you'll like those as well. Thanks and see you later.